All right, let's get right into it. How on earth can something as logical and, you know, structured as an AI model possibly get its head around lower league football? We're talking about a world where the only predictable thing is, well, that it's going to be unpredictable. Today, we're going to look at how data can actually find a signal inside all that noise, especially when Mother Nature decides to crash the party. And that quote just says it all, doesn't it? The goal here isn't to get rid of the chaos. That's impossible. It's about trying to understand its shape. We're in an environment where a beautiful, slick passing move is just as likely to be ruined by a boggy pitch or a sudden, crazy gust of wind. So how do you even start? Well, you look for patterns. And in this explainer, we're going to break down two real-world matches where the weather created two completely different kinds of puzzles for our AI models to try and solve. It's a really fantastic look at how the same technology has to adapt to totally different types of chaos. So picture this, two cold weather games, the margins are razor thin, and we've got two unique challenges that are gonna push these predictive models right to their absolute limits. Let's set the stage. And this slide just perfectly sums up the two scenarios. On the one hand, you've got this Barnsley-Luton match that's just slowed right down by thick cloud cover, turning it into a tactical slog. It's like slow chess in the fog. But then, on the other hand, you have an Exeter-Burton match completely thrown into disarray by gale force winds, that's not even football anymore. It's basically rugby with a football. Okay, let's start with our first case study up in South Yorkshire. Now, the key here isn't about some super complex problem. It's about something really rare and powerful that popped out of the data. Agreement. So here's the crucial thing you got to understand. In this case, the weather actually reduces the chaos. Yeah, you heard that right. That thick cloud cover and the cold pitch, it slows everything and everyone down. That means fewer sprints, fewer wild counterattacks, and a game that really favors the team with the more patient, disciplined, tactical structure. Now, this is where it gets really, really interesting. What you're looking at here is incredibly rare. I mean, getting four totally different machine learning models, you've got random forests that work like a giant flowchart and neural nets that try to copy brain connections, getting them all to come to the exact same conclusion, that almost never happens. When they all sing in harmony like this, it's a huge signal that the underlying patterns are super clear and they're all pointing in one single direction. And that harmony gets a big thumbs up from the master model, the stacked ensemble, which pretty much acts as the final judge. It listens to all the other models, it weighs their predictions, and then it makes the final call. And its verdict? A clear, maybe not overwhelming, but a definite lean towards an away win for Luton. It's like all the models are whispering the same secret. Luton's got the edge here. You know, all this talk of low visibility at Oakwell, it reminds me of this legendary match that went down in football folklore, the infamous Oakwell Fog game. The fog was so dense, the cameras were completely useless, and the fans started chanting that famous line at the referee, we can't see you. But the best moment, the one that tells you everything you need to know, was the goalkeeper literally yelling into the mist, who's got the ball? I mean, what a perfect summary of weather-induced chaos. Okay, now let's see how the models deal with a completely different kind of storm. So we go from total model harmony to just outright conflict. For our second case, we're heading down to Exeter's home ground, St. James Park. And here, the problem wasn't a lack of visibility, it was an excess of pure, raw, unpredictable force. A 25 mile per hour wind? That's not just some minor inconvenience, folks. It is a complete game changer. It turns every long ball into a lottery. Every goal kick is a negotiation with mother nature. Every set piece becomes a wild physics experiment. This isn't really football anymore. It's a meteorological obstacle course. And just look at this, the different models are fighting like siblings in the back of a car. You've got some, like the random forest model, over in Team Exeter's corner, then you have others, like XG Boost and the MLP, screaming for Burton or maybe a draw. When the AI experts all disagree this much is a flashing red light for deep, deep uncertainty in the data. So how in the world do you resolve this? Well, you bring in the adult in the room, the stacked ensemble model. Its entire job is to be the mediator. It listens to everyone's bickering, it analyzes their past performance and their low biases, and then it makes the final, most rational call it can. In the ensemble's verdict, a slight edge to Exeter. Now, why is that? It's because the weather itself becomes a tactical player in the game. That win just completely punishes Burton's patient, structured build-up play. But Exeter, they're a team that actually thrives in messy, scrappy situations. They welcome that chaos like an old friend. Their style is literally aligned with the weather. Okay, so after watching the models find harmony in the fog and then go to war in the wind, what's the big picture here? What are the key lessons we can pull from these two totally different scenarios? 
All right, a few key takeaways. First, and this is absolutely crucial, AI is not a crystal ball. It's giving us probabilities, not promises. Second, we saw how the nature of that probability is a signal all by itself. That harmony in the fog was a sign of a really clear pattern. But the model civil war in the wind was just as important. It was a huge warning for deep structural uncertainty. So how do you actually act on these probabilities when you know chaos is always lurking just around the corner? Well, the answer isn't just a better model. It's a better human strategy. The real key is managing your exposure to that risk. A really common principle is to never ever risk more than a tiny fraction, let's say 2%, on any single prediction. This is the safeguard, the one thing that protects you from the randomness that no AI can ever completely erase. And that really is the ultimate takeaway, isn't it? The models can give us an edge, a little peek into the patterns that are hiding inside all that noise. But to truly understand football, especially at this level, means you can never forget the most important variable of all. You have to respect the chaos.